All right, we've got some new derivative formulas, and so let's practice using them. So here we have um, um, a natural log of 5x cubed minus x, right? So we have natural log on the outside. We have the 5x cubed minus 1 on the inside, so we need to use the chain rule, okay? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna write f prime of x, and I need to take the derivative of the outside function, right? So natural log, okay, we said was derivative was 1 over x, right? But we're going to leave the inside function as it is. So we're going to just write this as 1 over 5x cubed minus x, okay? And then we're going to multiply that times the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 15x squared minus 1, right? So I could leave it like that, or I could just you know, recognize that this is just over 1, and then I could write it as one single fraction, 15x squared minus 1, all over 5x cubed minus x, okay? All right, um, the next one, um, g of x is equal to x squared times ln of x. Okay, so they're written next to each other. That means they're multiplied together. So now I'm going to use the product rule. g prime of x, then derivative of the first, right? So 2x times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, 1 over x. Now we can simplify it a little bit because x squared over x is just x. So if I wanted to, I could rewrite this as 2x ln of x um, plus x. All right. All right, so now we have a couple of, um, couple of trig functions. Here's the inverse sine. All right, so we're just going to use the formula that we know. Uh, we have the inverse sine of 3x. So we have 3x inside the inverse sine. So I'm just going to write the derivative using the chain rule. So dy dx is equal to, so I'm going to have 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever's inside, right, the inside function, 3x, that whole thing squared. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside function, so that's just going to be, I'm just going to multiply that times 3, right, because that's a derivative of 3x. All right, if we wanted to clean that up a little bit, we could put the 3 in the numerator, and then we can make this into 1 minus, and if we square 3x, we get 9x squared. So that's a little cleaner that way. All right, we got another one over here. Now we have the product of x times the inverse sine of x squared. Ooh, okay, so we've got a product of x times the inverse sine function, but then we have x squared inside the inverse sine, so we're going to have to combine the product rule and the chain rule, okay? So hopefully you're getting good at these derivatives. And um, so I'm going to write f prime of x, okay, I'm just going to use the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second, right? So derivative of x is 1, so I'm just going to write inverse sine of x squared. And then I'm going to add I'm going to plus, and then the first times the derivative of the second. All right, so I'm going to have um, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared squared. So we have x to the fourth power, right? That's x squared squared. But then, remember, I have to use the chain rule on it. So the inside function, inside the inverse sine, is x squared, so I have to multiply that times 2x. All right, again, I could clean it up a little bit. Um, so inverse sine of x squared, and then we could combine um, x times 2x is going to be 2x squared, and I'll put that in the numerator of the second term here. 2x squared over the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. All right, we've got a couple more here on the next page that are related to this, and this is just some practice using the tangent. So uh, on all of these, anytime you feel like pausing and trying these on your own, feel free, and then you can check yourself with the video. 
All right, so um, now we have the inverse tangent. And inside the inverse tangent, we have 2 minus x. So we're going to have to use the chain rule on it. So g prime of x is equal to, okay, so it's 1 over 1 plus the inside function squared. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of 2 is 0. Derivative of negative x is a negative 1. So we have to multiply all that times a negative 1. Now, probably what would make more sense, if, well, and I'll just go ahead and rewrite it. If I multiply these together, I would probably just write negative 1 over 1 plus 2 minus x squared. And you don't need to expand that square. Just leave it that way. Um, that's, that's just fine. All right. Got one more. Ooh, we have a quotient here. So <laughs> we're going to uh, use the quotient rule on this one. Oh, and the chain rule, right? Because inside the tan inverse tangent is the, uh, y squared. All right, let's see if we, we can, what we can do with this. f prime of y is equal to, all right, low d high. All right, so low d high. Okay, so I'm going to write d high. All right, so I've got 1 over 1 plus y squared squared, which is y to the fourth. But don't forget about the chain rule because I have to multiply that times 2y. All right, and then I'm going to subtract, because it's the quotient rule, high d low. So I have tangent inverse of y squared. And then d low, derivative of y with respect to y, is just 1. All right. And so I'm going to then, we have the denominator. It's all going to be over y squared. Okay. That's just applying the, uh, applying, applying the quotient rule. Now, hmm, I could, I could clean this up a bit, couldn't I? Right. I mean, I think it's fine if you leave it this way. I don't think you have to clean it up, um, especially if, if I'm just testing you on derivatives. The cleanup <laughs> is going to require algebra, which um, that's where that's where people have trouble, right? So, but what do I do if I was going to clean this up? I would probably turn in this, this when I would divide by y squared. That's the same as one over y squared, and then I'm going to multiply it times this stuff. I'm going to have um, 2y squared over 1 plus y to the fourth minus, uh, it looks like it's just tangent, tangent inverse of y squared. Okay. And then you can see if I distribute that 1 over y squared, I don't know if this really helps anything. I think it's fine to leave it uh, as it is. But when I distribute that y squared, I'm going to have 2, right, because the y squareds will cancel over 1 plus y to the fourth. And then I'm going to have the tangent inverse, inverse of y squared, right? All of that over y squared. So I don't know if that's any simpler, maybe. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's all I have for that, for this example. And um, I'll meet you in the next video for the next example.